Chapter 34 talks about nursing care of patients with lower gastrointestinal disorders. And it's talking about constipation. Constipation is when feces are held for a prolonged time in a rectum, more water is absorbed. This makes the feces smaller, drier, harder, and more difficult and sometimes painful to um, pass. There are several causes of constipation. Medication can contribute to constipation. Um, diet can contribute to constipation as far as having low intake of fiber or fluids. Um, different diseases can contribute to constipation. Some of the complications or a complication of constipation is impaction, um, which may result and it's when fecal mass is so dry it cannot be passed. And typically with um, patients who are impacted, some of them may say, okay, nurse, I, I got a little diarrhea or whatever, because they get little drops of um, watery stool that may actually come out. Um, and typically, amounts of liquid stool ooze around the fecal mass, and and I mean, and it results in incontinence of stool, where that little moist stool is passing. And treatment of um, therapeutic treatment, we want to patient who is experiencing constipation. You need to increase your fiber. You want to increase your fluids. You need to actually move around. Move around. That type of thing, we also can um, administer stool softeners and laxatives as well. Okay. And when you do have to um, look at a patient's stool, what are some of the things we should be observing for? What should we observe for? The color. The color. Yeah, we want to see the color. We want to know the color. What else? Consistency. Yeah, the consistency. Is it watery? Is it form? That type of thing. The Does it have a smell? <clears throat> you want to know what it smell like. That smell a little like infection. See if, you know, some people, um, see if can have a little smell where you can kind of smell see if. That type of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's talking about diarrhea. I'll also give you a list of foods that's um, high in dietary uh, fiber. And we know, again, dietary fiber work as a bulk laxative. It's a laxative other than the fact that it's not going to be watery stool. You're still going to have bulky, softer um, stool. And it talks about diarrhea. If a patient comes, nurse, I got diarrhea. And it's like, okay, Mr. Rogers, how many times have you um, had watery stool? <coughs> Excuse me, or loose stool. And they're like, well, this is the first time, but it's diarrhea. Well, in order for us to deem it diarrhea, an individual has to have more than three loose or watery stools in a 24-hour period. There are multiple causes of diarrhea, sugary um, alcohols, excessive caffeine, some diseases, some enteral feedings, um, radiation, it often contribute to uh, diarrhea. And you know, alcohol is a laxative as well. You drink alcohol tonight, tomorrow you're waking up with you know, diarrhea or loose stool, that type of thing. The therapeutic measures for diarrhea, patient have diarrhea, what do you feel like we need to do as healthcare providers for the patient who has diarrhea? You need to try to replace like the electrolytes they losing. Yeah, and fluids, hey, how about drink a Gatorade? Drink some Gatorades, you know, that way it's replenishing those um, lost electrolytes. 
we need to encourage fluids because if you have diarrhea, you definitely losing um, fluids or whatever. And the probiotics is to help the patient get the normal flora um, back in place. And a normal flora is those organisms that are along our um, GI tract, that type of thing. Antimicrobial um, treatment is necessary if the diarrhea resulted from an infection or resulted in an infection. What are some nursing diagnoses for a patient who is experiencing diarrhea? What are they at risk for? Dehydration. You are at risk for dehydration. What else? Some of them, depending on how long they got diarrhea, they're at risk for skin breakdown. They're at mm -hmm. risk for pain. Okay. They're at risk for electrolyte imbalance. Several okay. things patient is at risk for with diarrhea. And that's things that you need to always think about as a nurse. When I know this patient got this disease or got this condition going, what is this patient at risk for? Because we want to prevent it. Well, we want to stop it before it even starts. It's talking about inflammatory and infectious disorders. And it's discussing ap appendic itis. And anytime again, we hear itis at the end of a word, we know that something is inflamed. Um, an appendic itis is an inflamed um, appendix filled with pus. Okay. And signs and symptoms, and this you definitely be tested on, NCLEX, it'll be on NCLEX. Signs and symptoms of appendicitis is pain that is literally localized in the right lower quadrant or at the McBurney point. So you may see a test question, patient have uh, um, is having sharp pain at the McBurney point. What disease process should the nurse consider? That type of thing or a patient has been diagnosed with appendicitis, um, where is it more common for pain to occur? And that would be the right lower quadrant. With appendicitis, patient will experience rebound tenderness. Um, and it intensifies um, with pre when pressure is released after palpation. It also talks about the rosin sign um, is the right, it's in the right lower quadrant of the abdomen. Sometimes there's pain in the right lower quadrant when the left lower quadrant is palpated. You want to know the difference between both of those terms because you will be tested on those two terms. In complications of appendicitis, um, it can result in peritonitis if an abscess occur um, and it was to burst, that type of thing. So if the patient had peritonitis, if, the, if a patient have an abscess, the abscess um, bus or whatever, patient may require IV antibiotic therapy. And if they have an abscess, sometimes the physicians or surgeon will decide to actually surgically drain that abscess. And when you are hearing the word peritonitis, um, itis, of course, makes me think inflammation. But the peritoneum is the membrane lining the abdomen. The peritoneum is the membrane lining the abdomen. And sometimes some of the treatments for um, inflammation, the different things with itis at the end of it can be 
a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. When you're hearing that, it say non-steroidal. Non-steroidal means it's not a steroid, and it's an anti-inflammatory drug. Anti means it's against, and what is it against? It's against inflammation. So NSAIDs will work to uh, prevent inflammation, to lower the inflammation, that type of thing. So that's why we will give an NSAID, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, because we want to decrease the inflammation. And treatment for peritonitis um, revolves around what's occurring, what's, what's causing it. We need to know what's causing it so that we can know exactly how to treat it. It talks about diverticulosis and diverticulitis. Diverticulosis and diverticulitis. And it talks about the diverticulum is a small outpouching of the mucous membrane. And diverticulitis is typically the result of an infection. Yeah, so diverticulitis is uh, usually the result of um, inflammation or an actual infection. It show you um, the intestines because diverticulitis, diverticulosis occur along the intestines. It has these outpouchings that you see. And the thing with these outpouching is that things can lodge in it. Things can get stuck in it, seeds, that type of thing can get stuck in those uh, pouchings, you know, and cause some issues. And it talks about risk factors. People older than the age of 60 most commonly experience diverticulitis, a diet and low fiber, and high in animal fats, obesity, sedentary lifestyles, and smoking may increase risk for diverticulitis. Medications such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, opiates, and steroids can um, increase the risk. Some healthcare providers recommend avoiding nuts and seeds that can get caught in, di in a diverticula, such as um, tomatoes, raspberries that type of thing. Um, so NSAIDs are, would not be um, appropriate for a patient who is experiencing diverticulitis because um, it can actually worsen it. What else did I want to point out? And it talks about animal fats, how we should not be consuming um, large portions of animal fat. We should be consuming really small portions of animal fats because animal fats will contribute to uh, preventable diseases. And with diverticulitis, uh, some patients will require surgery. If it's um, you know, the result of infection, patient will require um, IV antibiotic therapy. Some patients, depending on the damage along the um, intestines, will require a bowel resection. Sometimes it's to a point where we need to cut this piece of the bowel off that type of thing. And then these are, um, what's up? The questions to ask when patients are experiencing pain, where's the pain, how does it feel? Because depending on how a patient describes the pain can kind of dictate what type of pain it is. For some patients, oh nurse, I'm feeling pins and needles. That's more so nerve pain when we're hearing that. Pins and needles, that type of thing. Some patients would describe their pain as sharp pain. It's kind of like a numbing feeling, nurse. I feel a numbing feeling. That's a type of pain. You know, a throbbing pain. All types of different um, ways that a patient can describe pain. We also want to know with the what's up, the A, what are the uh, aggravating, uh, what aggravates it? What alleviates it? What is the timing? How often is this occurring? How long do the pain last? What is the frequency? What's the severity on a scale of zero to 10? Zero being no pain at all, 10 being the worst pain ever. How do you rate your pain? 
some patients are not verbal that cannot communicate, we have to look at, uh, they got pain skills that we can check off to look at those indicators of pain. Because some patients show you they're in pain. As soon as you turn me over, I holler. Or I'm patting that same left leg. I'm patting that leg. That can be a sign of pain. Um, and it also talks about the use of useful other data associated symptoms. P, the patient perspective, the patient perception. Um, somebody please press mute. And actually, I am going to stop right here. Let me.